everyone, it's Olivia. Welcome back to my channel. On Instagram, I asked you guys, do you wanna see 29 life lessons in 29 years or what's in my Disney bag? When I first posted it, what's in my Disney bag was winning, but actually I just looked at it and you guys said 29 life lessons in 29 years. So we're filming this. Uh, so next week when I say, uh, this one the poll. No, it didn't. No, it did not. This one did. So <laughs> That's what we're gonna film today. So yes, I turned 29 on July 6th and I have learned some things in my 29 years. I'm not gonna lie Some of these are silly. Some of these are stupid, but they're all things I've learned. So let's get started So the first one I have is find the humor in everything I could talk to you guys about how I used to be a neurotic person and I never laughed at anything and everything is so serious and the sky is falling, or I could tell you a story. <laughs> and so last year when my grandpa died, um, it, it's obviously a very sad thing, but his funeral might be one of the funniest things I've ever lived through in my entire life. We, there are eight cousins with myself so the eight of us are standing waiting for my grandfather casket to be lowered into the ground and i just we laughed the entire time we kept making you know we were all very sad our grandpa's gone but my cousin kate left her lights on and so that prompted my other cousin to say whoever's the owner of the white sedan you left your lights on it was just silly the entire time and then we're all you know we had a little little barbecue at my grandparents house but like to instead of going out to a restaurant and having a bunch of italian food like we normally do we just had hamburgers and hot dogs and some family member not on my side no one that i knew he's just a, a happy drunk and flagged down an ice cream truck and it's something that should be so sad and it is sad, but to be able to laugh through that, I can like look back and just, it was silly. It was completely silly. And so whenever I'm stressed, I think about that and I'm like, it's fine. It, it You can just laugh. And another quote that I kind of live my life by is um, the devil cannot stand in the face of mockery. I'm probably paraphrasing it, but just the bad thing can't stand the lightness and the joy so just laugh at everything you freaking can i promise it's gonna make it so much easier number two i <laughs> i have chronic headaches migraines you name it and the best cure i promise if you get coconut water like the vita coco and watermelon they will cure your headache every time olivia that's just dehydration no it's not i had a really bad migraine i couldn't look at screens yesterday and i had that and i was fine number three is live as many places as you possibly can i have moved a billion times in my life i have moved from multiple states in new england to atlanta georgia to now southern california and every place i've lived including the states in new england while those are mostly very similar they've all been different and they're all people from different walks of life, particularly when I was living in Massachusetts, I lived in two towns there. One was, you know, uh, blue collar working class. The other one was more affluent. And the way that those people went about their lives is so different from each other. And they're 20 minutes apart. I moved to Atlanta and the way that people live down there is so different. And it's taught me that, it, it just taught me to have patience and like accept that not everyone does things the same way and it gives me a varied view of the world and a varied view of people and it just taught me that and i would say that if you are someone who has never left your hometown if it's at all possible because i understand moving is very expensive if you've you have the ability to live somewhere that you've never been that's in a completely different region a completely different state country what have you do it just do it you're gonna learn so much about yourself and if at the end of the day you're like this place isn't for me. I think I need to go back to, you know, where I came from. I prefer that way of life. That's okay too. Just don't sit around and be like, that place sucks. Just be like, yeah, that place wasn't for me. Things were different. Number four, <laughs> you're gonna have the same conversation a billion times. People say the same things every single day. For example, when I moved up to California, 
Oh, it's really hot out there, but it's a dry heat. Yeah, man, I, I got that so many times, but you wanna know what else is a dry heat and oven? <laughs> like, that's, stop saying that. Why, why do you keep saying that? When I worked at Disneyland, my name tag said Boston and everyone was, you're a long way from home. Yeah, man, like that's the most boring thing you can say to me. Tell me you've never, you don't know anything about where I'm from, but you will have those conversations a hundred times. Number five, if you like nice things, don't get a cat. Most pets in general, they're, you're not gonna keep nice things, but a cat in particular. Molly, my current cat, uh, my mom bought a nice face cream, left the lid off of it, and in the middle of the night, she ate it. She <laughs> ate it, nice expensive face cream, ate it. But also just in general, cats, you know, you think you're going to sleep in extra half hour, watch me shit on floor. I have a nice little footrest that's in my living room. It looks like it's, you know, crocheted together, scratching post. You know, if you like nice things, don't. <laughs> Number six, shaving your eyebrows is not a big deal. A few years back, I wanna say like five years ago, I started shaving the tail end of my eyebrow off to change the shape because I was playing with makeup and everyone was like, don't shave your eyebrows, no. They grow back. It's just hair. It's not a big it's not a big deal. You can draw it back on. They make products for that. Number seven. Deciding to drop a friend is really hard. So a couple of years back, I re I decided to stop talking to one of my friends that I had known for a very long time. And the reason I decided that was because we every time I spoke to them, I left the conversation feeling like garbage. And I can't say that I am a victim in this. I was just as mean, just as awful. And I had simply outgrown it. It unfortunately, I didn't handle the situation well and I, it kind of blew up and that's my fault. But I still care about that person. I still love that person. I still miss that person. But ultimately I had to decide not to have them in my life because it was really negatively affecting me. And it was a very hard decision to make. And when people drop people from their lives, they don't do it lightly. It's not just, oh, you treated me badly. Well, screw off. Like, no, I, I actually had to sit with that decision for a very long time. Number eight, everyone's got something to say. I'm gonna tell a funny story <laughs> about my grandparent. Um, it's funny to me and not to anyone else. So here's the thing. And again, you should laugh at everything. So when I first, the first time I wanted to move out to California post uh, undergrad, I was like, I'm definitely gonna stay. I'm definitely gonna stay. I'm not coming back. That turned out not to be the case. Um, but someone said to me, I don't think you should move out there because I don't want you to move out there. And it was my grandmother. Um, and the funny part, and funny, I mean morbid, uh, she died about a month later. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's dark, but it just like, it, it's just the thing where it's like, everyone's gonna say something about your decision. And like, when I decided to go to grad school, I was also met with like the, can you afford it? And this is a valid question, but it was uh, snidely asked to me, you know, can you afford it? That's a lot of money. I don't think you should do that. Like, is that smart? And if it was coming from a place of like genuine concern, I would have less to say. And that is a valid question to ask someone. But when it's comments like, well, I don't want you to go. And it's again, someone's gonna have something to say about your decision or you know the fact that i go to disneyland all the time like isn't that childish like my, it costs zero dollars to mind your business just be supportive period like but someone's always gonna have something to say about the decisions you make so you gotta do it you gotta make them for yourself keep all of your t-shirts buy them oversized and then keep them forever don't throw them away it doesn't matter oh they're ratty and gross use them as a dish rag um, or put them, you know, frame the design if you really like it. If it's like a vintage band tee that has just been worn to shreds or use them as like stuffing for a pillowcase, keep all your t-shirts, keep them forever. Or, you know, like if you're a parent growing up, every time Grace and I, my sister would forget pajamas at our dad's house. We're like, hey, do you have a giant t-shirt I can sleep in? Keep your t-shirts, keep all of them, hoard them, don't ever let go. <laughs> Number 10, ask the question. The worst they can say is no. My entire life, I was terrified to ask anyone anything. I'd just rather sit in silence uh, and not get things done <laughs> than ask a question. Ask the dumb question. How do I do this? This makes no sense. Hey, mom, can I hang out with this person? Because so many nights I spent by myself because I was terrified to ask my mom, terrified she would say no. And the worst answer is no. And it, even then it doesn't matter. <laughs> 
Ask and you shall receive. That's the lesson. 11, when it comes to adult friends, your age doesn't matter. I learned this very recently when I started grad school, all of the kids are about six years younger than me. And I met a friend, she just turned 21 and she's amazing and a wonderful person. And if I had let like the fact that she's so much younger than me dictate, you know, being friends, then I wouldn't have met that person, so. When you're an adult, who cares? Like there, re there comes a point where your life, le your life experience matches up, and just because you're older or younger, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when you're an adult. Just make friends with everyone. <laughs> Number twelve. Don't let anyone tell you that your hobbies are stupid. If it brings you joy, if it helps you unwind, if it makes you feel better when you're having a bad day, and it's not hurting anyone or yourself, who cares? Who cares if you like makeup and someone tells you, hey, that's that dumb girly stuff. So it's fun. I don't need your bad opinion. Man, I can't believe you watched Family Guy for six hours last night. It's a funny show. It doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Don't let anyone tell you your hobbies are dumb. If it helps you and doesn't hurt you or anyone else, we're in the clear. Number 13, do things by yourself. Don't wait to do things with other people because you'll be waiting around forever. Take the trip, take the solo trip, do that. Want to go see a movie? Do that by yourself. It's so important to have other people in your life, but other people's schedules won't always work with yours. And if it's time sensitive, you should do it by yourself. You can meet other people while you're there, but do it by yourself. Number 14, men in film have the worst film opinions. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Every single time I have been recommended a movie or been told that this is like a top tier must see movie by a man, I've hated it. <laughs> there, someone says to you, unless they can really rationalize it, a man says to you, the Godfather, red flag, Fight Club, red flag, unless they can actually rationalize Fight Club, there's one argument that I'm not gonna tell you on here because you gotta figure it out for yourself. There's one argument as to why Fight Club would be someone's favorite movie. Basically, you know, all the film bro -y film buff movies are the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. But you wanna know what the best movie I've ever seen in my life? <laughs> it's the silly girly ones from the early 2000s. Those are the best movies I've ever seen. And I study film. I have seen so many films, but continuously when people are like, you know, quintessential viewing. Casablanca is one of the worst movies I've seen in my life. Don't let film bros tell you what a good movie is. It's okay to be messy. I am a mess. I have piles of stuff everywhere. I have tried to be the organized. Everything is like aesthetically laid out. It doesn't work for me. That's not how I function throughout my day. That's not how the, my world looks. It, in fact, it stresses me out more because I feel guilty because we associate cleanliness with goodness this behind me stacks of everything on that dresser that's how i live my life in stacks it's so much easier i know where everything is if it's or like i just don't live my life that way i'm not gonna fold my clothes and put them away immediately no i'm gonna let them sit in the laundry basket for a week until i say i guess i should fold these finally and i've re very recently decided that I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about it because it doesn't work for me anymore. Now, if other people are coming over, I don't necessarily want them to like see piles of garbage or like dirt, like it's clean. It's just in a stack and it's out of the way. As long as it's not like a walking hazard, we're fine, but it's okay to be messy. 16, tahine is the best spice. <laughs> this one might get me into some trouble, but don't wear a band t-shirt if you can't name at least five songs. I know that men like to go up to women and be like, uh, do you know this band? I'm not talking about them. I am talking about someone coming up to you and being like, I genuinely love that band and wanting to have a conversation with you about it. You just look like an idiot. If you're like, no, I don't know who this Led Zeppelin is, even though they're the, one of the most popular bands of all time and I can't have a conversation about them. Like it's your fault at that point. Please learn at least, you know what, even if it's not five, learn three songs. You'll be in the clear. And if you can vocalize why you like those, even better. Having a lot of dogs is just as weird as having a lot of cats. Sunday is the best day of the week. Sunday is the only day that you can lay around and do nothing. Oh, I slept until 11, oh, it's fine. It's Sunday, man. 
Like, just chill. We're about to head into a busy work week. You have all of these obligations. Sunday is for sitting. Sunday is for not showering. Sunday is for getting together with your family and eating tea or eating TV and eating food in front of the TV. It's okay to take a step backwards as long as you try to take a step forward. You don't even have to take the full step forward. As long as you are putting in effort to take a step forward, it's okay to move backward. It's okay to move back in with your parents after trying to live on your own. It's okay to, you know, lose a job for a reason that is out of your hands. It is okay to not meet this milestone because of exten ex what is it? extenuating circumstances. It's not a big deal. It's all right. Just always try your best and it that step backwards is actually a step forward. Call your mom and dad. <laughs> They're gonna help. <laughs> They're really gonna help. I called my mom a couple weeks ago uh, trying to deal with a student loan. I called my dad this afternoon being like, hey, so what do you know about refrigerators? Working customer service is the hardest job in the world. You get zero thanks for it. You are overworked and underpaid. However, I think everyone should be required to work in customer service because you will learn so much about humanity and kindness and compassion and how to treat others. If you're stressed, lay on the floor. It is so grounding, not no pun intended, for like 10 minutes at least, you will feel so much better and you'll be, you will stand up and be like, all right, I think I can take on the day. It Also, if I have to work on something that I can't focus on, I will sit on the floor, it helps. I felt like garbage, I had a tummy ache the other day, laid on the floor, felt good. Being an outdoor person does not mean we're going for a hike and we're gonna run and jump and do a billion things. Being an outdoor person means that you like to be outside. I go full lizard lady outside, I am laying in the sun, photosynthesizing. Outdoor person though. Learn the phrase, I don't care. Your life will be a billion times less stressful. I'm not talking about like being an apathetic jerk towards everyone around you. I'm saying if something is happening, usually it's on the internet. If something ridiculous is happening, learn the phrase, I don't care. I'm not going to click on this clickbait video of another person outing themselves as an asshole because it doesn't serve me. Someone has something negative to say about your favorite book? I don't care. Good for them. I don't care. Number 26 is always stay young at heart. This is something that takes a very long time to heal from if you don't have the opportunity to do so as a child. Um, and what I mean by that is sometimes you have more responsibility as a child and then you end up being like, actually, I still like all of that silly young kid things. Or as an adult and you, you know, you've moved on, um, you should always be able to like go back and laugh and play because it's so good for your brain. It feels so good when you're young at heart and you just you wanna go, you wanna go run through a field because you can. You wanna actually better than running through a field because who likes running? Lay down in the grass and roll down the hill. You're gonna laugh the entire time. It is okay to cry and happy tears are the best. Second to last, learn how to cook. Seriously, even if it's like the simplest recipe, learn how to cook because neither misogyny or feminism is going to help you when you're hungry. Everyone needs to learn how to cook. And it took me a long time to learn how to cook, but I finally did it and oh my God, it's so fun. And, and it's a wonderful task to just do and get everything out of my mind. I have to cut these vegetables. And number 29 requires some nuance because um, it's the phrase choose to be happy. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about someone who isn't mentally ill telling someone mentally ill, well, you can just choose to be happy. That's not how it works. I'm saying that if you can learn how to live your life in a way that makes you happy and you made your choices that will lead you specifically to a healthier, better life, you chose to be happy. And that doesn't always look like what people think. It's not, when I say I chose happy, it's not me, you know, waking up every day and going for like a five mile run and like doing all those things that ha that people think happy people do. It's all of the things that I've outlined here. Um, I chose to laugh at everything. I chose to learn how to say, I don't care. I chose to continue to move forward and try my hardest. And I chose to learn and I chose nuance and I chose all of the things that ultimately better my life, but it, my life doesn't look like the other person's life, but I chose my life and I chose a happy life. So that's what I mean when I say, 
learn to choose happy. It does not mean you're just gonna wake up one day and everything's gonna be like, you know, sunshine and peaches. No, it's been really hard and long and stressful and there've been a lot of not happy tears, but I made a choice. I made a choice when I was 19, a decade ago. I could have chosen to not take steps forward. I could have chosen to lay in bed all day and continue to be miserable and hate everything about myself and hate everything about my life. Or I could have chosen to get up, do my own thing and laugh. And again, I could fill an entire like novel podcast docu-series about life and choices and you know being happy but it's ultimately not an end goal it's every day <laughs> so i guess it's really just having a positive attitude but even then that's a choice you make so there's nuance to that one i hope you understand what i'm trying to say and with that i hope you guys have a wonderful day thank you so much for letting me impart my 29 years of wisdom it's not a lot of wisdom some of them are silly some of them are just fun but it's, it's nice when you turn another year to reflect. And if you don't reflect, you'll just stay the same. So hopefully next year I will do some more reflecting. And when I'm 30, I might have something a little bit wiser to say than tahini is the best spice, but I think that's good advice. And I think you should heed that. So yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Like I said, please subscribe if you are interested and I will see you next time. Bye.